I'm Kathy, and I'm going to repot an orchid today. Many people have asked me how to repot orchids, and um, it's so easy. Okay, this is what you need to do. You need to probably first, okay, get a mix. There's different kinds of orchids, but because I'm uh, repotting a phalaenopsis, you might probably get a phalaenopsis mix. When you're repotting a lot of orchids at one time, you can actually go to a, to a, um, like a supply store, a garden supply stores, and buy these ingredients separately in bulk. So it saves you a lot more money. But usually they include uh, some charcoal, huger barks, larger sized barks, because the phalaenopsis are actually air plant orchids, so they don't need a lot of small compressed type of uh, bark. These are larger. And they have perlite in here, which are these white um, stones. Uh, it kind of gives it um, air uh, aeration inside the mixture. And so you want to get a pot around, uh, depending on the size of your plant. And this one is usually how you buy it at a store. And they, they usually import it. So what happens is the medium for importing orchids is usually just moss. And when you first buy it, um, you don't realize that the moss is actually killing the plant because it retains so much moisture that the plant roots can't breathe. So what you want to do first is go ahead and remove all of this moss. You don't want all of this moss. You want to clean it all out. And you want to kind of be careful of the roots. The roots are usually on the outer side. The middle part is where the moss is. There's some roots that kind of hide behind in inside, but usually it's always on the outer part because the orchid likes to breathe. It likes to have a lot of air. But the moss compacted, because of shipping purposes, the moss is used so that it can retain a lot of the water moisture for the plant. But in time, it actually drowns the orchids if it doesn't get enough air to dry out all of that moisture that has been retained. And that's why the orchids always die. And so you want to remove this, um, all of this mossy material here. Okay. So after you remove all of this moss, it's pretty basically simple. And look at all of these nice roots. This is very, uh, still in very good condition to rescue. A lot of times the roots have been rotted all away and it's really kind of too late <laughs> to um, rescue the orchid. So now that we have it all opened up and most of all of the moss has been cleaned out, you want to go ahead and get that pot and put some of that bark into that pot. Probably like halfway or so. And you want to go ahead and gently place the orchid and wrapping those roots around the place and kind of giving it a sturdy kind of sitting inside the pot. And then go ahead and start adding more of that bark all inside, compacting that plant inside that pot. Basically, this keeps the stability so the plant doesn't move around. It'll actually be stable, not wobbly, but yet at the same time, give it that air to um, aerate. The roots like a lot of circulating air and, um, and stability. It doesn't like to be wobbly and moved around. But you can see that the bark is huger. Uh, uh, huger, is that a word? <laughs> uh, bigger or larger so that the air can go inside. And in all of these wonderful medium, the perlite, the char charcoal is actually to prevent fungus from growing. And it's very nice to have um, as part of the medium. And the perlite opens up um, the medium, kind of gives it that flow, airflow inside the pot. But you want to use a clay pot because uh, the plant can actually breathe in clay rather than plastic. Plastic kind of suffocates. Okay, and there you have it. And then the secret now, I'm going to tell you a secret to keep your orchids happy and healthy. Don't use regular water because the regular water, like the tap water, the hose water, is filled with calcium, a lot of toxins, the chemicals that are really not harm, it's very harmful, not really good for the orchid. So you want to use distilled water. Okay, this is very pure. It's like the rainforest water. You kind of want to drench it with distilled water. 
Um, you can go to the market and buy it on sale. Usually it's like 79 cents per gallon. And a gallon lasts a long time because you're going to realize that the orchids really don't need that much water. It just likes to keep moist. It doesn't like to be soaked in water. But because this is a new medium, the bark will retain a lot of the water at first. So you want to drench it a little bit at, at the beginning when you just repot this uh, the orchid. You can go ahead and gently wash off the leaves from the dust. And you can see that the flowers have died away. Uh, they usually use these little butterfly clips to keep the stems um, standing up. But you can see new growth. So you want to keep the new growth and just clip the old branches off like so. And um, this is usually to keep these long stems or stalks or to keep the stem up. But this one's doing fine without that. I don't think I'll need that. And then here too, a new growth is coming out. I want to promote that growth, so I want to kind of leave that there. And then there you have it. That's your orchid repotting. And you can put it on your table and then just kind of let it rest and it will be nice and healthy. The roots are going to establish and you're going to love the orchid for many, many years to come. I have a collection. If you follow me, I keep all of my orchids repotted all near our window here. You can see it kind of from the outside, but it's all sitting on the inside window area and those are all the orchids that have repotted um, from previous uh, years. And they last. Thank you. Bye.